And what's the one thing that he could have done that would have made him significantly richer than he is now? Well, it's do nothing. Donald Trump would have you believe that he is a self-made billionaire. And that would be partially true. If you consider squandering your family's fortune, going $900 million into debt, selling your father's prized real estate portfolio, and then rebuilding everything off the back of television fame, being self-made. But the reality is the only rags to riches story in the Trump family was that of his grandfather, Frederick. And in a true three generations of wealth, shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves story, Frederick built the foundation for the Trump fortune. Fred, his son, Donald's father, scaled it to over 27,000 real estate units and Donald squandered it only to rebuild it to an amount that is less than if his father had just sold the entire portfolio in 1972 and invested Donald's portion in an index fund that tracked the S&P 500 for the next 50 years. Yes, that's right. Donald Trump could have actually been richer had he done nothing than he's become by doing everything that he claims made him a self-made billionaire. But before we get into the details, my name is Nolan Mathias, and if you want to thrive financially, this is the place for you. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss Donald Trump and his real estate empire the foundation that was built by his father and his grandfather, how pretty much everything that Donald touched leading up to 2004 pretty much turned to trash, and how on the back of his TV show The Apprentice, he was able to rebuild his fortune, albeit to substantially less than what it would have been had he just simply done nothing. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you exactly what that number could have been, and I'm going to show you what his net worth is in today's dollars, because Forbes just released a really great article on exactly how much Donald Trump is worth today. So in order to start this story, we need to discuss the three generations of wealth theory, because even though the three generations of wealth theory has widely been disproven, the Trump family fortune is a prime example where the first generation builds the foundation of the wealth, the second generation stewards that wealth and in some cases scales it, and then the third generation squanders it. And in the case of the Trumps, this is very much what happened. Frederick Trump, the grandfather of Donald, immigrated to North America. He found work as a barber's apprentice, putting away a pretty significant amount of money, and eventually following the gold rush to Seattle, where he bought a series of restaurants that eventually led him to the Klondike and the gold rush in Northern Canada. And in a true story of mining the miners, Frederick provided the miners with many of the essentials, food, alcohol, shelter, and women. And after 10 years of providing those things, he acquired quite a bit of wealth. He returned to Germany, found a wife, and then eventually returned back to the U.S. Now, Frederick died in the Spanish flu pandemic in 1918, but he left his family a pretty sizable amount of money, of which his son, Fred, which is Donald's father, partnered with his mother to start E. Trump and Son, which quickly became one of the biggest builders of housing in North America, building over 27,000 apartment units in New York alone. Now, without going into too much boring detail about how he then transferred a significant amount of that wealth to his children in a way that prevented his children from having to pay a pretty significant amount of taxes, let's just say that a significant amount of his wealth was transferred to his children virtually tax-free. And this included money that was transferred to, yes, the Donald. Now, the Donald would have you believe that he is a self-made billionaire. And that's definitely true. If you consider having an inherited net worth in the hundreds of millions of dollars and squandering it to a negative net worth of almost $900 million and then rebuilding into a billion dollar fortune again, being self-made. But let's call a spade a spade here. Pretty much everything that the Donald touched turned into a failure, with the exception of one thing, and that was the renovation of the Commodore Hotel into the Grand Hyatt, which, by the way, was backed by his father, or at least personally guaranteed by his father, to the tune of $60 million. But if you look at Donald Trump's business acumen, it is fraught with failures. His Taj Mahal casino went bankrupt in 1991. In 1992, two other casinos that Donald Trump owned also went bankrupt, as well as the Plaza Hotel. In 2009, Trump Entertainment and Resorts also went bankrupt. And there is a whole series of other failed businesses that are associated with the Trump name, whether it was Trump Airlines, Trump Vodka, Trump Beverages, Trump The Game, Trump University, the Trump Network, Shrimp cocktail, scampi shrimp, garlic shrimp. Oh wait, sorry, that was a different idiot. Now, all that being said, you can't discount the fact that Donald Trump built another billion dollar fortune. Even after 1990, he acknowledged to the Washington Post that while walking past a beggar on New York's Fifth Avenue, 
He turned to his then partner, Marla Maples, and said, see that person right there? He has $900 million more than I have, insinuating that his $900 million in debt was now essentially a net worth that had screamed past zero on the way down. Even with his father's backing and his future inheritance, he was now somebody who was essentially broke. But being broke wouldn't stop him from, again, like I said, rebuilding his fortune. Because as an aside here, there's three things that I found in my research of the Trumps that all three had in common, whether that was the grandfather, the father, or Donald himself. And those things were the unique ability to identify opportunity. In Frederick's case, this was the gold rush and the ability to see that while mining gold might not be a guaranteed way to make money, Mining the miners and selling them the things that they needed definitely was. To Fred, identifying the fact that housing was in significant need in New York City and taking advantage of government loans and government grants. To the Donald himself recognizing that reality TV was going to be a huge way to build a significant fortune in the early 2000s. The second thing that was common between all three of the Trumps was the relentless pursuit of a goal. Whether this was building a fortune in the Klondike, whether this was building a significant empire of real estate in New York City, or whether it was becoming the first reality TV star billionaire president of the United States. They all relentlessly pursued their goals and had the audacity to continue even in the face of not being able to succeed. Because let's be honest here, did anybody really think that Donald Trump had any chance of being elected the president of the United States? Well, Donald did, and he relentlessly pursued it and ultimately won. And of course, the third thing that they all shared was questionable ethics. Whether this was Frederick's involvement in prostitution, or the tactics that Fred used in order to avoid a significant amount of taxes, or whatever it is that the Donald is being accused of on any given day, they all seem to have questionable ethics. And while some would suggest that this is common amongst billionaires, I'm not necessarily sure that that is the case. And to be honest, when it comes to whether or not Donald Trump's even a billionaire, whether that's truth or not is also questionable. But back to the squandering of the Trump fortune. Because in 2004, there was a sixth bankruptcy that I didn't previously mention. And that was the bankruptcy of Trump Hotels and Casinos. And at that time, Trump's creditors were demanding a payment of $55 million or they were going to oust him from his own company. Now, at the same time, Trump met with his siblings and convinced them that they should sell Fred Trump's $700 million real estate portfolio that he had left to Donald Trump and his three siblings. That portfolio consisted of 37 apartment complexes as well as several malls. And even though it was sold for $700 million, it was later found out that the banks who provided the funding for the purchase valued the properties at over $1 billion. Meaning that Donald Trump and his siblings took a $300 million haircut in order to sell the properties quickly. And there was only one reason why they needed to sell those properties quickly. It was so that the Donald could pay his debts. And with his $177 million share of the profits, he did in fact pay off those debts and bought several properties. In fact, he went on a buying spree that was unlike any other buying spree he had gone on. Because at this point, he had seemingly learned his lesson about debt, and he proceeded to purchase most of his properties going forward with very little to no debt. But the question is, if he only had $177 million at the time and $55 million went to his creditors, how was he able to amass a fortune of over a billion dollars once again? Well, that's where The Apprentice came in. Because like pretty much everyone else in 2004, I was a huge fan of The Apprentice. I still think Troy should have won. But because of The Apprentice, Donald Trump became one of the biggest celebrities in North America, if not the world. Now, in Donald Trump's years as The Apprentice, he earned $65 million from the show itself, and it's pretty reasonable to expect that that $65 million was multiplied multiple times over, if not 10 to 20 times over, in the licensing deals that he was able to create. And it is certainly true that there was a significant amount of licensing that happened after that first year. I know for a fact that certain organizations were building buildings and paying licensing fees to Donald Trump in order to sell the properties as Trump properties. Even though he had very little to do with the development of those properties and the building of those properties, he was making a significant amount of money from simply slapping his name on them and creating at least a perception of luxury. Add in other ventures like the previously mentioned Trump University, Trump the Board Game, books, and other things of the like, as well as his investment in several golf courses and resort properties, and it becomes clear that the thing that made him really rich really quick 
was the leverage that was provided from his TV personality. And with that TV personality and the income derived from it, it seems as though he was able to purchase a pretty significant amount of luxury style real estate and rebuild his family's fortune, albeit in a significantly different way. And this time with significantly less debt. And I'll get to that in a second when I show you the details of Trump's net worth. Now, the estimates of Trump's wealth vary widely. Bloomberg will have it at one number, Forbes will have it at another number, and of course, Donald Trump's number is significantly higher than both of those. However, lucky for us, Forbes recently released their estimates on Donald Trump's net worth, and it's quite staggering. As of right now, it seems that Donald Trump is worth $2.5 billion. Now, he recently took a pretty significant hit from his social media businesses that are failing like much of his other things, but for the most part, his net worth seems to be high and very much intact, very much low debt. Current estimates put his New York real estate at $720 million, non-New York real estate at $230 million, golf clubs and resorts at $730 million, his social media and business brand at $240 million, and cash and personal assets at $610 million. Now, I can only expect that since he became president, that his personal brand's value has gone down quite substantially. Because when you have 50% of the country that hates you and 50% of the country that loves you, well, I have to expect that that's gonna be damaging to the value of your brand. Now, as we look through his real estate assets, I think there's a lesson here for people. And that's that debt is a bad thing. And Trump obviously realized this, having to face creditors on a regular basis, up to six times if records are correct. So after he became famous on The Apprentice, it was clear that he put debt to the side. Because if you look at his portfolio now, there's very little debt to speak of. Mar-a-Lago, value $325 million, zero debt. U.S. golf clubs, $216 million, zero debt. Three European golf properties, $94 million, zero debt. And the list goes on. And while there are some properties that do have debt on them, most properties do not. So while Donald Trump's story is definitely not a story of rags to riches, or even a story of being a self-made billionaire, because he wasn't, he had significant help from his father, you can't deny that Donald Trump was definitely very successful at rebuilding his portfolio, using the tools that he had, and seeking out that opportunity, which was reality television, which made him, once again, a billionaire. But here's what's interesting. Between 1982, when Forbes first released the Forbes 400 list, Donald Trump's net worth went from supposedly $200 million up to $1.7 billion, down below zero, as we discussed, and this is something that he acknowledged to the Washington Post, to eventually up over $4 billion. Now, here's what's really interesting about this whole thing. In a 2015 article for the National Journal, SV Date ran the numbers on the Trump fortune and what he could have done that would have made him even richer than he is now. And what's the one thing that he could have done that would have made him significantly richer than he is now? Well, it's do nothing. Yes, that's right. If in 1972, Fred Trump had simply sold his $200 million real estate portfolio and split it five ways between his children and then simply put it into a trust that invested in an exchange-traded fund or an index fund that tracked the S&P 500, Donald Trump could have amassed a fortune of $3.7 billion. And even if you consider capital gains tax, it would have been $3.2 billion, which is significantly more than the $2.5 billion he is worth now. Now, of course, had Fred done that, well, the Donald wouldn't be the Donald. He wouldn't have gone through all the things he went through in order to make himself famous and eventually the president of the United States. So I have to think for somebody like Donald Trump, who is clearly somebody who is relentless in his pursuit of goals, just having the money put away and living off of it wouldn't have been his style. He wanted that fame. He wanted that fortune. And most of all, for some reason, he wanted to prove that he was better than everybody, including his own father and grandfather. So the reality of Donald Trump is very simple. He is not a self-made billionaire, although he did rebuild his own fortune after making a significant amount of bad business moves. But the fact that he failed so spectacularly and came back from it is probably more impressive than if he had built the entire fortune on his own. Because there's not a lot of people who squander their entire family fortune and are able to recover and rebuild it back to close to what it was. And there's certainly nobody else in history that's done that and become the president of the United States. 
So love them or hate them, at least from a business standpoint, there's some lessons to learn from them. And at least in some way, shape, or form, you have to respect them. Oh, and if you want to see some real rags to riches stories, make sure you check out this video right here.